depression, addiction, everything is coming after you, and it wants your life, but it can't have it because Jesus died for your life so that you might have life and that more abundantly. wave today. A buddy of mine took me to a place, to a concert this Thursday. And this concert was with artists that wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> but those folks in there worshipped Jesus. Folks didn't look like you, they don't talk like you, they don't walk like you. But the name of Jesus it has transcended cultures and nations. And those folks worship the Lord. What it showed me was the word never loses its power. It don't matter who the agent is, it doesn't matter who's singing, it doesn't matter who's singing the song. It doesn't matter who's singing a song. It still keeps its power. And that's what leads me to this particular text. Go with me to Luke chapter 7. I'm hyped too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke chapter 7. international version. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 10. Hallelujah. a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus. I love that. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, this man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. I said, Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word. I just want to sit on that. Say the word. I, I know it's somebody in this room that that's all. But say the word and my servant will be healed for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. 
turning to the crowd following him he said I tell you I have not found such great faith even in Israel then the man then the men who been sent returned to the house and found the servant well what do you do when you have a solution to your problem you know it you you have it but for some reason your feelings are blocking you from using it my feelings my emotions I, I'm blocking my very help if you don't use this solution your situation or problem will die but if you use this solution your situation will live today I want to talk to you about how a non follower how a non follower of Jesus non follower amazes Jesus more than any believer he has ever seen proving not all needs God's presence to have his power father in the name of Jesus I need your presence in this house <laughs> and I'm asking you father to have your way Lord I already recognize the stiffness and the weight that came with the room but Lord let the burden be yours we lay it at your feet Lord I pray that you will lighten our load and have your way Father, hide me behind your cross. I can't take on what you take on. But I'm asking you, oh God, as I submit to your power, that your presence and your word will go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Please touch your neighbor next to you and say, I love you in the name of Jesus. Come on. And tell them you love them. And say, I really do. <laughs> and I really do. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus has just wrapped up ministering to a large crowd of people. And he enters into his hometown, Capernaum. Capernaum is a town in which Jesus lives the majority of his adulthood. This is where he lives. And here in this town, there's a centurion soldier. A centurion soldier has anywhere between 80 to 100 soldiers underneath them. Hallelujah. And he has a very valuable servant, very valuable to him, that is sick, that is about to die. Hallelujah. About to die. Is there anybody in the house that's ever had something that has been valuable to you? that was about to die, that was sick, that had an issue. I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe you had a relationship that was sick. Maybe, maybe, maybe there was something on the job that wasn't working well, and it was sick. Something was about to die. I don't know who I'm talking to, but, but maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's something on the job. Maybe it's your mind. Maybe it's something that is coming your way. But something is sick, and it's about to end. It's about to, to die. I'm so thankful to have a God in heaven that always gives us a warning sign before something deceases. Come on, somebody, a warning sign. I'm talking about a warning. A warning sign could be a sickness. A warning sign could be my wife 
ain't talking to you. Oh, Lord, help me somebody. My wife ain't talking to me. I'm getting a warning. This is a warning. Come on, somebody. It, it may be a warning sign where I get a text message from Bank of America. Uh-oh, somebody even either tapping in my mess or my money getting short. Hallelujah. <laughs> a warning sign. I'm getting a headache. I'm getting exhausted. Something's telling me I need to sit down. I'm getting a warning sign. Oh, something's not feeling right. Something's not working properly. I'm getting a warning. This is a warning. Come on. I'm get, I, I, don't, I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord is showing you or giving you a warning. I like to call it grace. He's giving you time before something next. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. He's giving you time. He's giving you grace in that relationship. He's giving you grace in that marriage. He's giving you grace on that job. It's a warning. He's giving it. But how many of us have ever been in this situation when we had the warning sign, we got the answer. We got the solution. I know what I got to do. I got a cold. I know what I got to do. Hallelujah. But I get into my feelings that blocks the solution from solving my problem. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to, boy. Y'all got to get loose up in here. I get into my feelings, and it stops the process from healing. Come on, somebody. This man, this man is having an issue where his favorite thing, his servant is sick. And, and he sins, hallelujah. He sends his, his buddies, hallelujah, to go talk to Jesus because he's a Gentile. And these guys go to Jesus, and they, comp- they try to convince Jesus that, hey, you got to go see this dude. He's a good dude. Come on. You, he's a good dude. He's done things for us. You got you to gotta, you gotta go see him, Jesus. These guys, hallelujah. These guys are standing in the gap for this man trying to get a connection for the man because he doesn't have a connection with Jesus. Let me ask you something. Is there somebody that you know on a job? Maybe you got a friend that's not a believer. But, but have you ever been in a situation where somebody had something going on and they never had a connection with the Lord, but you had to stand in the gap for them because they didn't have a connection with Jesus? And these dudes are saying that this guy has a great reputation, even though he don't look like us, talk like us, believe like us, he's been good to us. Hallelujah. And God, it is worth, it is worth that you, that you bless this man, that you go see this man. I don't know who I'm talking to. But maybe there's somebody that's praying for you right now because you don't have a connection with God. And the reason why you made it here today is because somebody is interceding. Oh, interceding on your behalf. Because if it wasn't for their prayers, you probably wouldn't be here. But aren't you glad that there's somebody out there that is interceding, connecting with the Father so that your thing can survive? So Jesus hears this, hears this, hallelujah, and Jesus is convinced. They are able to connect with Jesus, and Jesus is on his way. Boy, I wish I had somebody to talk to these folks over here. Jesus is on his way. Come on, somebody. Salvation is on his way. Come on. Prince of Peace is on his way. Come on, somebody. Hope is on his way. Peace is on his way. El Shaddai is on his way. Emmanuel is on his way, somebody. Come on. Get with me. Jesus is on his way, baby, because somebody stood in the gap for me. And now the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the King of Glory is on his way to your house. Come on, somebody. Because somebody stood in the gap. And, and the man decides that, guess what? I'm going to send 
because I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I'm going to send my guys up. Hallelujah. I'm going to send them up and stop the presence from coming because I'm in my feelings. I don't, I don't deserve his presence. Y'all know who I'm talking to. This man stops the presence of God coming into his home because he gets into his feelings because he says that I don't deserve it. Isn't it interesting that the men that went before the a second set of men that he sent, they said that he deserved it. He was worthy of it. He had great reputation. But now he sends another crew and says, I don't deserve it. Isn't it amazing that we, in the public eye, we can create a reputation for ourselves in the public, but know what's really going on in private? I thank God, hallelujah, for covering me while I'm yet in private so that it doesn't make it public, protecting my reputation. Aren't you glad that we have a God that took on the reputation of man dying on the cross so that your privacy could be protected, that he could cover you? I don't know who I'm talking to. That's why I can stand up in the morning and say, there is therefore no condemnation for them that walk after the spirit but not the, after the flesh because he took it on on the cross. He doesn't deserve it. What? Deserve means worthy. It, 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 means, it means compatible. I'm not worthy of it. Deserve. It comes from a Latin word, deserve, which means devote to serve. Oh, he got it already. Somebody already got it. So when I say I don't deserve it, I'm saying I'm not willing to devote time to serve it. Oh, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve this house. Well, you ain't willing to serve it. I, I don't deserve this woman. I'm not willing to devote time to serve them. Oh, I, des I don't deserve this job. You don't, you're not willing to devote to serve it. You're waiting for, listen, you're trying to go to the next level. How are you go to the next level when you're not willing to devote to serve the thing that God gave you? God's already gave me, giving you something. Oh, I'm waiting for the next thing. I'm, wait, I'm ready to be promoted. I'm ready for the next stuff. But you're not willing. To, I don't deserve this. I'm waiting for the th next thing. You got to be willing to deserve or devote to serve the thing that God has given you. And these men, and these men, hallelujah, and these men is coming to him. Hallelujah. It's coming to him and saying, no, no, stop, 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 stop. Uh-uh. This is why we have to have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Right? It's believing in the right or wrong what if. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I remember our daughter, uh, uh, Haven, was two years old and She's really advanced for her age, and she would play around with, uh, we, we'll have her on the uh, iPad, and she was just learning so fast. And every now and again, some Halloween stuff would pop up, right? It'd just pop up out of nowhere. And we had to, you know, turn it off and things of that nature. But by the time we turned it off, she had already got, heard, the, heard the information or got the image. And it started playing off in her actions. She was kind of afraid to go walk around in the house. And we were like, babe, what's going on? And we started seeing her actions based on what she had heard and saw. And we had, as parents, number one, we had to cut all that stuff out. And we had to start ministering to her. Tell her, well, she's saying monsters. We said, no, nah, baby, angels. Mm -mm, ain't no monsters. She's like, daddy, monsters. I said, uh, I'm, the, I'm the bully. I'm the monster up in this house. Come on, somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to because whatever's coming after you, what, listen, our Father in heaven is greater than whatever's coming after you. So whatever's coming after you is afraid. It is scared. Hallelujah. 
of the presence of God. This man had to have faith to even send men to Jesus. So when he sends this man, when he sends his men to Jesus, they already, he's already in this place of, feel, of his feelings where he doesn't deserve. He doesn't deserve. And so, hallelujah. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't feel like he deserves. Why don't you feel like you deserve for Jesus to come into your house? What's in your house that you feel like you don't deserve Jesus to come into? What's in your house? What's in your room? I'm going there. What's in your bed? Come on. What's underneath the pillow? What's going on in your house that you feel that you don't deserve for Jesus to enter into your place? Because if he enters into your place, things have to change. He will change your character. He would change your character. He would change your nature. He would change everything that's going on in your home. But this man, for the life of me, elder, he doesn't want the presence of God in his home. <laughs> he doesn't want the presence of God. When the presence of God will change everything. Hallelujah. I wish I had half a church. I remember I used to hear Pastor Mike say that. Now I know what he's talking about. Jesus is, is halted. Jesus is halted. Stopped from coming to this man's home. And the, the messengers that send it, the second messenger says, listen. The man told us to tell you, the centurion told us to tell you. Oh, God, I'm just, oh, God, thank you. This man was already in kingdom culture. He, Elder, he already had a kingdom nature. He says, look, look, Jesus, you don't, we, I don't need your presence because I understand how this thing works. Let me explain to you how it works. I know how it works. I have, I'm a man under authority. There is somebody that is over me. And I have people who are underneath my authority. I get how it works. In other words, when I hear a word, I believe it. Because I'm under authority. But because I'm over authority, when I speak a word, they move. Because the word doesn't lose its, its, lose its power based on the individuals that it passed through. It still is as powerful as it was when it was spoken by Caesar. So when they, listen, when Caesar, when I speak, it's as if Caesar spoke. Come on, man, I wish I had some, I, I got too many millennials in here, they don't get what I'm saying. When you was a kid and your neighbor came out and said, you know, uh, your mama said you gotta be, in, be at home before them street lights come on. And as soon as you heard the word, Right? Because that word doesn't lose its power because of the authority that it came from. This is why Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. And I remember Thomas says, man, no, 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 don't, don't play with us. Thomas says, show us the father because it besides, we need to see him. He says, how long have I been with you? I and my father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And if you don't believe me, at least believe me by the evidence, by my work's sake. Come on. I love it when Jesus says, and greater work shall you do. Because I go back to my original form, my, my original office. Greater work shall you do because now we are representatives of the word. The word never loses his power. Hallelujah. 
This dude, take this thing from me before. This dude figured out how to bypass his presence and still activate his power. Even though this guy was in his feelings, he didn't allow his feelings to overpower his faith. What are you saying, Pastor? Don't let your feelings get in front of your faith because the only way you can move, God, honey, is by faith. That's it. Not by your gifts. Not by your gifts, by your faith. This dude figured it out. That, that, that man, Lord, that I know that I can have activate your power, not by your presence, but by your power from a distance. Jesus looks at this guy, looks at his, looks at his, his disciples, I can only imagine. You knuckleheads, y'all see this? <laughs> I can only imagine Jesus saying, I haven't seen great faith in all of Israel. My, I'm, in Israel. I'm in Israel. I haven't seen great faith in all of Israel. That's what I'm saying to you, saints. Whatever, wherever your feelings are, whatever you feel like, even right now at the sound of my voice, don't allow your feelings to supersede your faith. It is by our faith that we move him. It is by faith that in which we are saved through grace. It is by his faith, by your faith. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when the men go, go back, to see on the satyrian that, <laughs> hallelujah, that the, that, that the satyrian's servant was made whole. That absolutely that the word, the power of the word of God works from a distance by faith. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to. I want to stay right here. You might be somebody that's in your feelings right now. You don't want God to come in your home. I don't know why. Or maybe I do. Maybe I know why you don't want him in your home. Because if you wanted him in your home, he would change you. But his word, but the word still works. If you just believe. The Bible says, when Jesus Christ Give me something, because I got to get some noise in here. I, give me something. Give, just give me, give me, give me something. It's real, real soft. I'm going to hit him with this one. If this don't work, then we're going we gonna, to we gonna get my oil out. Imagine my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I can imagine my Savior on the cross yell out, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabathani, which means, Father, why have thou forsaken? left the Christ because the Savior took on all of the sin of the world all the condemnation all the curse he nailed it to the cross perhaps the father left him perhaps the father wasn't present but the word was and the word never 
this power. Even if you won't allow his presence because of your feelings, the word never. Never loses his power. a word that was given to them over their life. And because you let your feelings get in the way, you block, you block the process. And I'm asking you right now, this is your opportunity, to open up your faith. Right now, don't let your feelings supersede your faith. Word still works from a distance. That's how cold he is. Better than Steph Curry, I'm telling you. Just raise your hand where you are, whoever I'm speaking to. Just raise your hand up. And I want to touch and agree. I want to intercede for you on behalf of connecting with Jesus. this word, God, that your word is so powerful. You even give more power to your word than even your name. God, I pray that you would unlock our faith, that our faith comes from you. <laughs> give us the gift of faith that we may unlock the power that we may amaze you the way this non-follower amazed you. That's all we want to do, Jesus, is amaze you. We thank you for the word. Lord, I pray that if anybody that is in their feelings, they, they, they don't allow it to supersede their faith. everybody that's in the room not only because of your presence and for those of you who are, who are uh, streaming in online I thank you for your giving this church has not cheated God G-I-V-E-R-E. 
P-A-L to 73256. That's 73256. That's give real. That's how we, that's the only way you can give. And do it from your heart. Also, you can go to our website at IsraelLife.com. That's I-S-R-E-A-L. our feelings to affect our faith. So I must do a better job at getting you some homework. <laughs> so that we are so that we are prepared to go before the Lord and hear his word. Have that just raise it up to the Lord. I want to pray over it. It's so good to see. In the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you. We thank you for this beat, too. Father, <laughs> hallelujah. God, we ask that you would bless all the giving, all the tithes, all the heartfelt giving. And we ask that you would receive it unto you as sweet aroma. We ask that you would touch all those that are giving. And we know and believe you will give back to the giver. Oh, you love givers. And we ask that you would give good measure. Press down, shake it together, running over. Shall men pour into our bosom. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen.
that story, the centurion came from a kingdom culture. And what I'm trying to do with Israel life is the Lord sent me to build a culture, a mindset, a condition. We cannot be like everybody. We have to train ourselves to be the way God intended us to be, to look like Jesus. So I wrote these down. The Lord gave these to me. But it is important that we are intentional as a church to exercise these. Number one, I put 10 things you are grateful for. This should be something that we do every day. It will change our attitude. <laughs> it will change your attitude. It will change your very nature of how you think. Seriously, you should do it every day. Every day. Make sure you write this down every day. Every day. That way you're not in your feelings. Because <laughs> we need his presence. Amen. Two, three people you need to forgive. That might, You might be on the list. Sometimes I'm on a list twice. <laughs> All three sometimes. <laughs> right? Because if you don't forgive your brother who you see, you got to understand, God won't forgive you for your trespasses. So we have to exercise it. And guess what? That same person might be on a list. Well, it, it happened to me for at least two months until they came off. <laughs> Amen. You, you, three people you need to forgive and do it every day. Sometimes it'll be just you. Sometimes it's God. One person that will intercede for you. Understand what we talked about. Those brothers were interceding for him. They connected with Jesus on his behalf. Somebody needs to be praying for you, and you need to know who it is. Find you somebody, and if you don't know who that is, make sure you come and see some of our elders. You need to have somebody that is specifically assigned to you. Do you hear what I'm saying, church? Oh, yeah, I'm, about to act, I'm about to act like a trainer up here. Brandon, you ready? For, no, I'm trying. <laughs> one person that will intercede for you, have their name. You need to have one person at least that is praying specifically for you. Amen? Church, we are a church without walls. This says 60 minutes. 60 minutes plus of exercise. I didn't write that down. Last one is 60 minutes plus of exercise a week. I, I say plus a week because I, I know some of y'all y'all like, what? Drill sergeant? <laughs> Listen, I, I'm going to take it easy on you, but I need 60 minutes a week plus of exercise. Why? We are church without walls, and you better believe we're going to take the church outside. We're going to evangelize. We're going we're gonna to get outside. We're going to knock on doors, and we, I need some folks that's in shape. Seriously, we got to get rid of some of our addictions. I'm, I'm one of them. Listen, ask my wife. We went, we went out to eat uh, on, on Sunday, and I, we missed the brunch, but I was so mad because I, I didn't want to change my habits yet. I wanted my, my pancakes. <laughs> and they didn't have the pan. They, didn't, they said, brunch is over, sir. And I'm like, dog, I didn't want to start this until next week. And it was cool because I... I, I ordered a salad, and it was so good. And it was, it's so interesting on how you can accidentally create a new habit. Now I can't wait to get back to that salad. So this is what we're doing. Ten things. Number one, three people you need to forgive. Two, one person. Uh-oh. One person. One, they laugh at the forgiveness thing. Let me stay here. Three people you need to forgive. One person that will intercede for you and 60 minutes plus exercise. Amen? Everybody got that? You guys excited? Man, stand on y'all feet, yo. No. No, we probably do some jumping jacks. What I'm going to do.
regular service, we're going to do a 15 minute warm up. Following service, for the, those of you uh, who are assigned to, to stay, you know who you are. Make sure you guys stay after service. We have altar call. Uh, you know what we're doing. If you're somebody that is also a um, health professional, if you're a health professional, if you a nurse, a doctor, if you, if you have AED or CPR certifications, anything like that, would you please uh, meet me at the stage as well? I want to get your, your you all's information for one of our elders. We want to get that information so that uh, we can put together a team just in case something go down during service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that your power works even at a distance. God, but we prefer your presence as well. God, we ask that you would never leave us or forsake us, that your presence never leave where it belongs, and that's inside of us that your Holy Spirit remains, that we don't hinder it, that we don't allow our thoughts, our actions to hinder it, but we ask that your Holy Spirit will always have its way in our lives. Now, God, would you work with us during this week? Help us to accomplish these tasks so that we can be the Christians, the saints, the individuals, us to be tricked or trapped. Keep us straight way. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Love somebody, hug somebody, dap somebody, elbow somebody. Tell them you love them. In Jesus' name.